what they typically order is a total cholesterol, the bad LDL cholesterol, the good HDL cholesterol, and something known as triglycerides, which are the fats in your blood. And there's some value to this type of testing. But emerging science has shown this really isn't a strong enough predictor of your cardiovascular risk. We know with newer markers on these tests now that we can identify up to 90% of your cardiovascular risk markers with this newer type of testing. So for example, when we look at a newer test here, we have tests like HDL2. We actually break down your cholesterol markers. So instead of looking just at total HDL, good cholesterol, we break it down into HDL2 and HDL3. HDL2 actually is the most protective good cholesterol. So let's say your total cholesterol is normal, but you have low HDL2 cholesterol, that still is a, is still a risk factor for cardiovascular disease. As well, we have other specific lipid markers, a lot of which are passed on genetically, like lipoprotein A. That attaches to your LDL particles, and it makes it more likely for you to form plaque in your arteries. And there's other lipid markers, like apolipoprotein A, apolipoprotein B, studies have shown they increase cardiovascular risk, and markers like homocysteine, a byproduct of protein metabolism. That can increase your risk factors for stroke. And then we have markers like fibrinogen, which is blood clotting. So if your blood's too thick, you're more apt to have a stroke or a heart attack. So you can see these newer markers are much more valuable in identifying your cardiovascular risk. So ask your doctor to have not only the old markers, but these newer markers which are much more helpful in identifying your weak points in your cardiovascular health.